Thanks for clicking on to the late edition of Vogan's European Outlook for Saturday the 18th of November. Before we get into the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe. And of course, on Thursday the 30th of November, the official winter forecast will be released here on marfoganweather.com and YouTube as well as the website as well. So thanks for clicking on. I hope everybody is enjoying their weekend so far. Let's have a quick look through the tweets and see what's been going on. Interesting tweet here by our friend Ryan Bruin, and uh, looking at the solar situation, cycle 25 to date, uh, certainly looking like June 2023 was the first peak of cycle 25, with November now being its lowest daily return on sunspots since the summer of 2022. And there has been some rumbles, rumbles in recent times of a potentially spotless day on the surface of the sun, which would be uh, pretty unusual, actually, given the fact that we're just a year or so away from a solar maximum. Uh, Richard Trott, uh, also our good friend and uh, a partial contributor here at times on the um, on the channel, shows the remarkable pattern that has delivered, you know, France's 30th, 30 day wettest period on record so I'll, I'll start that again uh, the last 30 days has been the wettest in recorded history for the nation of france and it's all thanks to a blocking area of high pressure over greenland and iceland and uh, a channel of exceptional uh, moist mild conditions running underneath that blocking area of high pressure and has delivered one storm after another and the period uh, really from the middle portion of October to the middle of November has been exceptionally wet across particularly northern France, but also southern England. And yes, this video, I did make mention of that. And um, we are going to look uh, a little bit at the exceptional rain events in tomorrow's global weather and climate report. This is a scene here captured at Dubai Airport. Um, a day or so ago of torrential rain, thunderstorms uh, causing all sorts of flight delays, both inbound and outbound at Dubai International Airport due to heavy rainfall, exceptional rainfall across parts of southern Brazil, while of course we've got drought and heat in other parts of the country. We've had the uh, record rainfall in South Florida and several parts of the world has seen exceptional torrential rain in recent times and we will look at that in a little bit more detail as we go uh, through the course of tomorrow so this is another tweet here france just went through its wettest 30-day period on record nationally averaged rainfall total between the 18th of october 8th and 16th of november was an incredible 237 millimeters that's 9.3 inches this comes after the country experienced its driest first half to October on record. So what an exceptional turnaround it has been for the nation of France in recent times. Also, our friend David Birch um, showed this tweet here back, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Northern Hemispheric snow cover running well above average. That, of course, is despite record warm temperatures globally. And you can see here this chart by the Finnish Meteorological Institute indicating that above average snow, uh, snow cover across the Northern Hemisphere. So it's all eyes, of course, on an area of high pressure that is to the south, southwest of the British Isles here. We've got, of course, an area of low pressure that is bringing um, a spell of, of wind and rain this weekend across the majority of the country. However, that area of high pressure that I initially alluded to there is expected to shift westwards as we move through the upcoming work week and should hopefully, I'm saying hopefully, if you like cold weather, it should drive a little bit colder or southbound as we go through the, the middle and second half of the week and into the next weekend here. You can see here above average temperatures, GFS ensemble upcoming five days the six to ten day you can see the turnaround taking place and then the seven to eleven or seven to, yeah seven to eleven and the eight to twelve you can see here below average temperatures showing up on the models here 
ECMWF, this is the weeklies, and you can see here that the, the upcoming seven day period warmer than average across the UK, Ireland, and southwestern Europe. As we play through the loop here, as that high shifts to the west over the North Atlantic, you can see here that colder than average temperatures replace the warmer than average through the period in the 9 to 16 this day, so to the 26th of November through the 3rd of December here. Looking at snowfall prospects, interesting one here. This is off initially the GFS, and you can see here as we play through the sequence, the GFS does highlight the increase in snow cover across a good swathe of Europe here as we move towards the final week of November here. So this is upcoming uh, next weekend. So this is Saturday, a week today, and you can see the area of snowfall uh, starting to increase, especially across northern areas of the British Isles. Now, remember, with a northerly airflow, you have a limited amount of snow, especially through the central belt and points further south. Protected by the highlands, that northerly flow tends to provide snow cover to central and northern highland region. It stays generally clear uh, across the central belt, thanks to the protection of the mountains here. But look at the amount of snow that is seen sniffed out by the models towards the final days of November across central portions of Europe. Big snowfall amounts in parts of the Alps into the Balkan region, the Pyrenees, parts of northern Iberia. And uh, it will be interesting to see whether this materializes or not, of course. This is the ECMWF. As we play through the loop, you can see here, it too is printing out some snow, uh, primarily more towards the uh, further east parts of Europe here. But notice here, towards the end of the month, like the GFS, you can see that the model is sniffing out some snow uh, towards the northern half of the UK, in particular here, parts of northeastern England, the borders of Scotland may see something in terms of snow here. Looking at the overview chart here of the GFS, you can see area of low pressure at the moment here. Uh, we've got milder air from the Mid-Atlantic uh, running underneath this circulation, pushing warmer air across Ireland, Northern Ireland, uh, England, Scotland, and uh, Wales also. Uh, spells of uh, fairly heavy persistent rain um, cycling around that area of low pressure. Now, as we play through the loop, you can see here as we move towards next week and uh, beyond that area of high pressure then starts to kind of drift a little bit further west here with low pressure to the east that means we've got a run of northerly winds exactly how cold that air mass is remains to be seen of course but it may provide something a little bit more in the way of wintry and at least an added uh, chill in the air um so i'm not getting overly carried away about this cold spell what i do think is going to take place is we're going to start to see a drier theme take place but then colder air it brings a spell of winteriness especially to higher elevations i think down at low levels it's going to be a bit of a push it's going to be a bit of a struggle to get anything particularly wintry in terms of the um of, of a, a snow um orientation at least anyway so we're going to watch this space as we go uh, through the course of next week here here's the 850 temperatures of the gfs and you can see here that area of low pressure driving in something a little bit milder across the uk and ireland especially across iberia southern portions of france colder locked up across northern scandinavia northwestern russia as we play through the loop that um colder air from the north up towards iceland and greenland tends to get kind of drawn in on the rear of that area of low pressure and then cycles around the base of the, the circulation, driving in something a little bit cooler. But as we push towards the uh, early portion of next week, that area of low pressure then exits. We've got that area of high pressure kind of drifts a little bit further west, northwest, and allows that colder air from the north to start trickling its way in. It's a temporary process. It gets pushed out in the central portions of Europe. But as we press towards the middle and latter half of next week, you can see here a more uh, bona fide area of colder air gets drafted in as that high slides to the west and allows that open door to the north here. Like I said, the, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of 
keep a lid, lid on getting overly excited at the moment. It's still early in the season, but nonetheless, it's still a colder theme to end the month of November, begin potentially the month of December here. So we'll watch this space as we go through the course of next week. We'll see how the models uh, evolve here. They may slightly shift away from the coal theme. They may actually become a little bit more bullish in terms of the coal theme. We'll watch and see what happens uh, anyway. Looking at the North Atlantic Oscillation, you can see here it goes positive. Then it goes back towards the neutral line once again. Looking at the Arctic Oscillation, you can see here that it indicates something more negative it's firmly positive at the moment but it goes towards the neutral and then negative as we move towards the latter half of november here so we'll watch and see uh, how that materializes well short and sweet relatively speaking anyway this evening be sure to check out the global weather and climate report that will be released tomorrow afternoon looking at all the extreme events that have been taking place around the world and there has been a lot of that so stay tuned for that. Don't miss out. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again tomorrow with the Global Weather Report. Bye for now.